This is Dr. Daniel Cotta, and today I want to talk about gastroparesis. Most patients don't understand what gastroparesis is, even though they've got this diagnosis from either their gastroenterologist or their primary care physician. Today we want to go through gastroparesis, talk about its etiology and what causes the symptoms that you're facing, and then in subsequent videos we're going to talk about how we as surgeons treat gastroparesis to relieve those symptoms in a logical way. What I've done now is I've just done a simple diagram of the stomach. And when we look at the stomach, it's divided into four parts. We have the fundus, the body, the antrum, and the pylorus. And what the basic problem is in gastroparesis is the muscles of the body of the stomach and the fundus go bad. And this is the earliest thing that happens to the people when they start to notice that they can't digest their food normally or have chronic abdominal pain when they get the diagnosis of gastroparesis is this is what's going on and when we want to label how this goes bad it's first the fundus is the first part to go bad the body is the second part to go bad the third part is actually the pylorus which is the valve at the end of the stomach and the fourth part and last to go bad is actually the antrum and when we start to think about the symptoms of gastroparesis they all start with the paralyzed stomach and I've labeled that the first problem of gastroparesis. The second problem comes from that issue and that is the fact that we get rotten food in the stomach as the result of the paralyzed stomach. That rotten food makes patients feel very bad and makes them feel sick all the time. And when they feel sick all the time that's why they don't feel good all day long is because they're constantly nauseated because you have rotten food sitting in your stomach and how could you feel good with rotten food sitting in your stomach. The third part, and I said goes bad third, is the pylorus. Now the pylorus is a circular valve at the end of the stomach. It's primarily there to control the blood sugar levels in your body. And the interesting thing about this is when the paralysis gradually goes down the stomach, what happens when the pylorus gets paralyzed, instead of opening up, it constricts down. And I like to liken this to when you see a person who's handicapped and their arm is gone in spasm like this, it's because they've been paralyzed in such a way that their tricep in the back of the arm can't straighten. So their bicep innervation is retained and it just contracts in. And so what happens with this pylorus when it goes bad, it spasms itself down until nothing can go past it. So I want to illustrate to you what happens if you have gastroparesis and you're vomiting. So the antrum, like I said, is the last to go bad. So this pylorus spasms down and it spasms down so it's all closed or almost all closed and so the antrum still has some ability to squeeze because it's the last place to lose its innervation. So all it does is it squeezes the food against the pylorus which then ejects it up the esophagus because it has nowhere to go. So when we talk about the symptoms of gastroparesis, we're talking about symptoms from rotten food and pylorus spasm. And when we talk about the treatment for gastroparesis, we have to find a way to treat, number one, the symptoms of rotten food and pylorus spasm. And we have to find a way to deal with the paralyzed stomach to allow the food to go through without causing nausea and food retention. And so our subsequent videos, after we have this short introduction, are going to deal with the ways that we deal with these issues, the issue of the rotten fruit, the pylorus spasm, and the paralyzed stomach. They often have symptoms due to their colon, and that's what I label other. So the same problem that's causing their stomach to lose its ability to contract happens in their colon. And so oftentimes gastroparesis patients will suffer from chronic, very severe constipation. And so, in order to talk about dealing with the whole gastroparesis patient, so many people want to throw drugs at them, but the actual truth is what we need to talk about is treating their whole gastrointestinal system in order to get them in a place so they can actually function in daily life without being in chronic pain and chronic constipation. So these are the things which we need to deal with whenever we talk about them. We're the only people that do this in the state of Utah and most of the states surrounded. Um, we've seen large amounts of success with these patients and we'd love to do a consult either in person or via telemedicine. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.